Well, one of those Arab uprising countries which Obama blames for his economic strife, of course, is Libya, where NATO's still trying to force Gaddafi loyalists into submission. Anti-regime fighters are now taking control of the airport in the fugitive colonel's hometown of Sirte, the last stronghold of his loyalists. Well, civilians continue to flee the violence, saying NATO's hitting their homes. Sukhan Chandan joins us now live from London. He is from British Civilians for Peace in Libya. Thanks for being with us this evening. Locals are saying power and water have run out, as well as petrol and other goods, and NATO is hitting civilian buildings. How do you see this tying in with their mission to protect the people? There is no mission to protect the people. NATO is uh, uh, involved in a war against African and Arab country for many different reasons, which I've gone into before in Russia today and, and other places. But my sources on the ground, and I cross-check my sources on the ground in Libya, tell me that Bani Walid is still a strong resistance against the pro-NATO forces and NATO itself. And as you mentioned, there's CERT. And also my, my, my uh, sources on the ground mentioned that a very important border town between Tunisia, Libya and uh, Algeria has been captured by Gaddafi resistance, um, a town called Ghat, and also Gaddafi, south of that, between the Algerian and Libyan border, is also surrounded by uh, Gaddafi's resistance against NATO. So really what we have in Libya is a situation akin to Afghanistan, but the difference being is that Gaddafi is arguably a lot more popular than the Taliban's national resistance uh, is and was in Afghanistan. Like Afghanistan, Gaddafi has neighboring states supporting his resistance, uh, that's Algeria and Niger recently, just last week basically told the French uh, government to back off because they're not going to detain uh, elements of Gaddafi's reg regime uh, uh, finding uh, refuge and actually they're living in private ac uh, accommodation in the, in, in the capital in Niger. So really what, what, what's starting to develop and compounded with the deep divisions that there are amongst the rebels, the rebels are openly fighting each other. I mean this, this, this rebel government is, 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 is a complete joke. I mean it, it would be a joke if it weren't so tragic and, and, and resulting in tens of thousands of people being killed by NATO and, and the pro-NATO rebel forces. But the, 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 the so-called NTC first said, oh, we're going to form our government in Tripoli in a few days, and a few weeks. And now they're saying, well, we're not going to form it until the whole country uh, defeats Gaddafi. So really, this is indicative of the deep crisis that the rebels have always been in, actually, in Libya. Uh, as you're telling us, your, your sources on the ground paint a much different picture than what we're getting from the mainstream media uh, and from other sources. How is that possible and how does that all play in uh, to this mission as a whole as you see it? Well, you know, Malcolm X once said that the media will, will, will teach you that your friends are your enemies and your enemies are your friends. And uh, on March the 20th, the most intelligent uh, mouthpiece of the British elites, that's the Financial Times, said very clearly, without the role of Al Jazeera in this war, there would be no successful NATO war in Libya. And actually, Russia today has been the, own, the closest thing to the only consistent critical voice in relation to the, to, to, to the Libya war. I think if empire learned from Vietnam some lessons, i.e. don't let the media have free access. They definitely learned the, the lessons from the 2003 war of aggression against Iraq. That's make sure that there's no critical media, that the media is on side, and they achieved that with Al Jazeera, actually, where you got the Arabs thinking, you know, uh, colonial aggression is freedom, you know, so we, we, we've gone into a very warped uh, scenario here. So, so they learned that lesson, and also they learned the lesson that make sure the media does not oppose the war, make sure there's no prisoner uh, controversies like Abu Ghraib, and there are prisoner controversies, make sure none of the, uh, the, the kind of actual humanitarian fallout like Iraq happens in Libya through the media. So I think this is the situation we're faced with, and I think the Global South, especially Chavez and his government, recognize that the, that the, that the the struggle is really on the media front, but in that, the Global South is lacking, and we need more channels like Russia Today. We need more uh, polls of the Global South to produce effective media to counteract that war propaganda coming from the NATO countries. Uh, thank you very much for your very kind words about RT. How much longer do you see NATO's firepower being deployed in Libya since, uh, at least according to most sources, Gaddafi's all but gone now? He's, he's far from gone. And like I said, if the Taliban can reemerge Phoenix-like, there's no reason whatsoever. Actually, there's more reason why Gaddafi and, 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 and his revolutionary green movement can emerge in, 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 in Libya. But there's, there's, a few other, there's a few other issues that the, that, that the media have left out. What happened to the, the predominantly black town of Tawarga? 
it's been ethnically totally cleansed by the pro-NATO rebels. And these are the type of scandalous things that are going on that none of the Western media want to report. I was once uh, on TV uh, with a rebel lead, Libyan rebel leader, and he stormed off at, within, within 20 seconds of me speaking. I invite these people, come on to Russia today with me and other people who are critical of the war, and let's have a proper critical debate so the audiences and the people out there can actually, you know, can, can make up their own minds intelligently about what's going on. But, but just, 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 to, so just to directly answer your question, it's far from over. And my sources on the ground and any critical voices and, and analysts in Libya will, will, will clearly say that the fight is just starting right now. What do you think is going to happen in terms of reports that we're hearing uh, about these civilians dying, about homes being bombed, about hospitals being hit? I mean, it, it seems unlikely that NATO or any other forces are going to have to, uh, you know, if, if I may, pay for what's happening in Libya. How do you see that situation? I, I, unlike Iraq and even Afghanistan, there is just no critical voices coming from the international human rights organizations. Actually, they've collaborated with this whole war effort um, in, in, in making up stories like the, the, the now everyone knows the false stories about the Gaddafi's army taking Viagra and this mass rapes, this kind of nonsense. So if there's no critical voice, then people don't have uh, the power to critique uh, the, this NATO foreign policy. So there's going to be nothing really on the ground. So it, 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 again, it befalls the countries of the global south. Why not send international brigades? Now that might, may sound like a very kind of extreme thing to say, but what, the global south have to take the initiative because we're seeing NATO now take the initiative against us. And in so doing, we rolled over and allowed Libya and Gaddafi to fall. And I think everyone in the global south, in Latin America, Russia and China and Africa, know that we are in, are in, a, in, in a relative crisis right now. And we can only overcome this crisis, only stop NATO rolling on other countries in Africa and the global south if we take the initiative now. Journalist Sukhan Chandan from the British Civilians for Peace in Libya, thank you very much for your time. Interesting talking to you this hour.